Now we have the most important urban development, urban railway development of the past 50 years, sponsored by Bombardier. Uh, and could uh, Jeanette Bowden come forward? Hello, Jeanette of Bombardier, to sponsor the award. This was an interesting one because there have been a lot of urban railway developments in the past 50 years. And we've already mentioned the Victoria Line uh, from the point of view of its um, pioneering automatic train operation. But there was so much more to it. It was obviously the congestion buster which London Underground needed. It was it's desperately, desperately important for that. Uh, but also there were other features like the energy saving stations. If you stand at the platform on the, uh, on the Victoria Line, you'll see the trains come up towards you so they don't have to waste energy braking and they depart down the hill away from you so they use less power to accelerate. A very simple way of energy conservation uh, many long time ago with absolutely no moving parts. Uh, there are other aspects too. But of course, thinking of Victoria Line, which is a long time ago, we now need the Chelsea Hackney to relieve the Victoria Line, which is desperately overcrowded too. Up north, we have the Tyne and Weir Metro, which, which launched, I suppose, metros in this country. It was the first modern metro we had, although it avoided street running. I remember going up there for the inauguration by one of the pointless transport ministers and he said, uh, what's the point of these gates? All these people are jumping over them. And uh, the Tyne and Weir Metro man looked at them and said, no, they're the photographers and press people in your party who can't be bothered to use the tickets we've given them. On the other side of the Pennines, we have Manchester Metrolink, which of course went the next stage and used existing tracks, which is a very economical way and taps existing markets combined with street running to join opposite sides of, of, the, of the city. City centre running uh, is demanding, but of course it does take people where they want to be in the centre of the city. I have particularly fond memories of Metrolink uh, because I was able to go up at about every six months and watch it being built, uh, see it become reality before my eyes. And of course, once it's grown, it's just gone on betting, getting bigger and better since it opened. And it, now the original trams are being replaced with, with new stock. London also had its share of um, light railways. We had the Docklands Light Railway. And when you uh, travel on it, what is now a large, high-capacity network, it's hard to remember that it began as a... a a tiny little toy town railway, people called it, going into an area of, of industrial desolation. It was cheap and cheerful system. It was criticised for that, but with, if it hadn't been cheap and cheerful, it would never have been built and authorised. And it was the key for its own success and expansion. Uh, on the day it opened, it went straight to full capacity. And that was because when people saw an urban railway being built, they believed that it was going to be a financial centre. The property developer said, the government means it, the government is really serious, it's really going to happen. And today we have Docklands, massive area. I don't know about you, but if, if I go there, I get lost, it's so big. The final one is the Jubilee Line extension, which I think unfairly got a bad reputation. It suffered from two things. First of all, uh, it was decided that it was going to be the first application of moving block signalling, uh, which wasn't ready. And secondly, when it was recovering from the delays of that, they decided to have a dome to celebrate the millennium and the JLE was the only way to really get people there. Since then, as an example of, of uh, the public sector's, uh, you know, people say about it that you know, we need private finance because the public sector can't manage big projects and the Jubilee Line extension is the one they usually quote. But it does work, it's very popular now, it works, it had some stunning architecture, it pioneered platform uh, barriers, screens and doors, so I think it's a worthy contender for our competition. And the most uh, innovative, uh, the most suc successful railway uh, for the uh, past period, as voted by our rail readers, is the Docklands Light Railway. <laughs>